And I am interested in understanding how much you have had to actually overcome from the scientific community, from various other communities to, to get to where you are. So it depends on how, you know, Martin Luther King once said, you can only be ridden if your back is bent. So there's a level at which you, you persist. And if you don't persist, you die, right? So you persist if your ambitions are strong and authentic and, and deep as mine were. So what am I overcoming? I'm overcoming teachers who have no, no sense of my ambitions, have no support for my ambitions, who recommend things for me that don't fulfill my ambitions. They're, they're, these are people throughout my educational arc who seems to me should be there to support your ambitions, not get in the way of them. So these are things I needed to overcome. By the way, I have stories from my parents, a generation before me, where nothing that happened in my life comes close to an average story that they could tell about what they experienced. So I'm, I'm not here begging sympathy, okay, or claiming victimhood. I'm simply saying that I needed energy, emotional and physical energy, to not have these occasions stop me, for me to continue. This is the persist. You persist because you have energy to do so. And uh, at no time in my schooling did any teacher ever say of me, oh, watch him, he'll go far. Oh, why, he's, one, he's watching, and they didn't. Now, my grades didn't earn that compliment, okay? They would only say that to people who got straight A's. And so, no, I'm not there. But then they see I have some athletic talent, and, oh, you should be an athlete. Why don't you be an athlete? Well, the 1960s and 70s, all the famous black people anyone ever knew were athletes. Or if they weren't that, they were singing and dancing. So, um, oh, my gosh, I became an athlete and a dancer. That's kind of, what does that even mean? Did I become an athlete and a dancer more out of fulfillment of the expectations of society than out of my own personal ambitions? I don't know that I'll ever have the answer to that question. Nonetheless, throughout all of this, I persisted. And, um, you know, right on through graduate school, through professional life, things people say to me, and I, you know, taxis that don't pick you up. All right, fortunately, that number has dropped precipitously over the last two, uh, since 1990, I kept track of this. Um, that was when I moved back, uh, late 80s, moved back to New York City. And you can, there's a very, um, uh, it's a very um, a quantifiable metric, what fraction of taxis will pick me up and what what, what fraction will not. And so that's gotten much better without regard to my fame or anything. So I can wear a hat and glasses. All they see is that I'm a black male and that's their signal and that's what they cue on. So you know, I'd live with this, it's same shit, different day, uh, except it's getting better. And by the way, the, 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 the highly uh, publicized deaths at the hands of police, um, that, used to happen and you would never know about it. It would barely make the local news. So in a curious, perverse way, the fact that if that happens anywhere in the country now, the whole country knows about it, that's kind of a perverse progress. Do I, should I call it progress? I don't know. But um, the local deaths of police killing unarmed black people was local news when I grew up, barely local news. So we have come a, a long way, at least in terms of, of social, cultural, political activism mm -hmm. with regard to this. And so that's, that's a good thing. But my parents trained me, my brother and my sister, how to not get shot by the police in the street. And by the way, I only, other than that letter that I posted, I hardly ever talk about it. Um, there's some highly viewed videos of me 
talking about it. That was the last two minutes of an hour long panel on other subjects and people decided to sort of, well, I have a black scientist in front of me, let me ask him a black question. So uh, professionally, I don't ever really talk about this. Uh, not because I'm trying to hide it, it's because I'm trying to move on and I'm trying to live my life as a scientist. Mm -hmm. Not as a black scientist, not as your example of a black scientist, not as the person who you're going to call on to tell you what to do about how to think about black people. No, I'm not that person for you. I'm a scientist. And so that's why I, I don't engage in these things generally. 